Professor Dave and Chegg here. Now that we know what aromatic compounds are, we have to learn about what kinds of reactions they can do. And the first class of such reactions we will learn about is called electrophilic aromatic substitution. This will involve pi bonds acting as nucleophiles, similarly to the addition reactions we learned about, but there will be some key differences. So let's learn about these now. We can recall that with an addition reaction, some pi bond acts as a nucleophile and attacks an electrophile. Two groups will end up adding across the double bond, and the pi bond is gone in the product. If we look at benzene, we may be tempted to think that this will react in a similar manner, since it has pi bonds. We could think that an addition reaction could occur across one of these pi bonds. But this will not be the case, and the reason for this is that benzene is aromatic. First of all, these pi bonds are not localized, like the example above. Remember that all these pi bonds are delocalized around the ring, and because of this, benzene is extremely stable, stable enough that it will be much less reactive towards the typical electrophiles we have seen for addition reactions. So while propene will react with hydrobromic acid, benzene will not. Instead, benzene can do electrophilic aromatic substitution. When this occurs, one of the protons on benzene will be substituted by the electrophile. So they essentially swap places, and all of the pi bonds in benzene remain intact. Obviously, this will proceed by a different mechanism than addition, so let's learn the general mechanism for any EAS reaction now. When benzene interacts with some electrophile, which will typically be activated by some catalyst, a pi bond will act as a nucleophile and attack the electrophile, whatever it may be. This will generate the arenium ion intermediate, which is resonance stabilized. Then something in solution will extract the proton that is specifically on the carbon atom that now bears the electrophile and neutralize this cation, thereby restoring aromaticity. So the reason benzene proceeds by a different pathway is that there is a high energetic premium placed on maintaining aromaticity because it is such a stabilizing effect. And because benzene is so stable, the first step, where aromaticity is broken, will necessarily be the rate-determining step, with a high activation energy, whereas the second step is quite fast, as it is thermodynamically favorable to restore aromaticity. So to get more specific in terms of what types of groups we can put on the benzene ring, let's see some examples. First, there is halogenation. We can brominate benzene by using bromine in the presence of iron tribromide as a Lewis acid catalyst. Benzene will not interact with bromine on its own, but if bromine attacks the catalyst, since the iron atom is electron deficient, it will form this activated complex, which is much more electrophilic, since attacking this bromine will allow these electrons to go and neutralize this positively charged bromine. This catalyst therefore lowers the activation energy required to get benzene to attack this electrophile. The rest goes precisely as we just discussed, where one of these bromides will extract this proton, we get bromobenzene as a product, and the catalyst is regenerated to go and promote another reaction. We can attach chlorine in the same manner. There are similar conditions that will allow us to attach alkyl groups, acyl groups, nitro groups, sulfonyl groups, and more. And here are the reaction conditions associated with these transformations. For example, for nitration, we are using nitric acid and sulfuric acid, and that results in the introduction of a nitro group, preceding by a nitronium ion intermediate, which is what will act as the electrophile. For sulfonation, we are using sulfur trioxide and sulfuric acid, and it is the protonated version of sulfur trioxide that will act as the electrophile, resulting in the introduction of a sulfonyl group. While there are subtle differences to each of these reactions and their conditions, they all operate by the same basic mechanism that we elucidated. While there is a lot more to discuss in terms of this class of reactions, we should now be familiar with the concept of electrophilic aromatic substitution and the general mechanism it follows, where a particular substituent will replace a hydrogen on an aromatic substrate, most frequently benzene. Professor Dave for Chegg, see you next time.